you don't want to be having that. A layer of mold on the top, I don't think you want to be drinking that. <laughs> Some of them don't have any mold on. They might be brave enough to try them. Which one should I try? Decisions, decisions. There's only four that hasn't got mold on. <laughs> Wives, wives have been up there. It's while Laura's uncoiling the gigantic snake down the bottom, I'm dragging it up the top. I've never really liked you at all. I cannot hide it anymore. Laura's like a, looks like a scene from like Dirty Dancing in here. <laughs> it actually does. <laughs> I don't want to swing on it. <laughs> it actually does as well. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a pole dancer. Welcome to the Moulin Rouge. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Origin Homestead upgrade. <laughs> Where all your deepest fantasies are feel fulfilled. <laughs> Don't even know where to be. So hopefully our calculations have been correct. How's it looking at your side, Laura? Good, it reaches. Just got a few loop de loops that want you to stretch out. Loop de loops? Yeah. And I was trying to talk to you when you were pulling it. I was like, Daniel, can you hear me? I'll go, I'll go back up the top and I'll do that again. Incoming, Daniel, can you hear me? Daniel. I can't, I can't believe it actually works. <laughs> it actually works. So yeah, this is our off-grid journey so far, where we stumble and fumble our way through it. So to start this epic journey off, we need to take you back a little to how we got here. We were dissatisfied with the modern world and wanted to try something different. For the past three years, we've been living in between many different places, jumping in and out of several different jobs in order to try and transition over to a life which is off-grid. Some days look like this in beautiful nature spots, whilst others look like this. Sleeping on family members' drives, sleeping in supermarket car parks and laybys. We then started looking for land. We checked out a few different pieces of land, but then fell in love with this beautiful spot. Then once we finally signed the deeds and the land became ours, we knew that this is where the real work would begin, and the real adventure would start. Cue epic music. Hold on a minute, it wasn't that epic. We did make a lot of mistakes and still are, to be honest. We wish there was a book called Off Grid for Dummies. We could have really done with it. Cue the more appropriate music. <laughs> Bottom terrace is so boggy that we literally can't get anything up. And we were stupid enough to try bring this up and we're paying the price now because the truck's stuck. <laughs> Pumps in, all we've got left to do now is just, just turn the generator on and see if it works. Hope for the best. Yeah, fingers crossed. Safety first.
halfway through doing the roof, I realized that I've completely made a massive skill boy error the wrong way around. And now it's completely wrong. I'm gonna have to take the rest down and then restart again. Well, I've had an idea today to give the keys to Laura to drive the truck up to the top of the land to get the IBCs. Please look after them. <laughs> I've only got to drive it a couple of hundred, like a 50 meters or something. <laughs> I'm sure one, I'll manage. You're the one who's saying you're nervous. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. You liar. <laughs> this is the wrong door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get the right door, Laura. So yeah, we had lots of fun and laughs, but every story needs a challenging part, and have we got that for you. Our journey so far has been a story of two different extremes, an intensely hot summer and an extremely wet winter. Because we don't have our residence visa yet, we can only stay for 90 day periods, and it just so happens to fall during the summer and the winter, the most intense periods of the year. In the summer, temperatures were consistently hitting over 40 degrees Celsius, which is 104 degrees Fahrenheit. The land dried up and most of our energy was spent trying to stay cool. It also forced us to slow down with our projects. These long hot summer days were challenging. It was difficult to escape the heat. We knew we needed to add infrastructure to a barren landscape. I need to get used to getting up early because it gets really hot here, really early, so we're kind of making the most of the cooler weather and getting worked on while it's still cool. It was so hard trying to stay cool inside of a metal van. We had to use what we could to cool down. The heat was relentless and with the land having no infrastructure it was really tough. to put a bag of ice on his head to cool himself down. It works so well. You know, when you drive, it's just so nice. It's so hot outside. There's a little thick bag of ice. Drop it on the back of your pressure points in your body. Works a treat. You should start selling this on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, start selling <laughs> Bag of ice. It's cheaper than aircon anyway. Yeah, it is. Especially when you haven't got aircon. Yeah. Many days were spent trying to find bodies of water to dip into. Like more of a kind of a natural lake this there's a lot of snakes in the water because last time we came we seen so many snakes yeah <laughs> and also also the fish like it'll every now and again like the nibble on things <laughs> so you've got it so don't have anything exposed that's what i say <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> little sausages <laughs> we've cut our time in the water short because there's a little bit too many snakes in there for our liking i know they're probably harmless but it's still like there's still a fear there of being bitten by a snake but nevertheless, um, we really appreciate getting into a body of water and just cooling our temperature down a bit. Because on days like this, you really need it. It felt like we couldn't get enough water in us those days. And with the dry weather, the dusty road started causing issues with the van and there was always something to fix. But despite the hot weather, we did manage to build a lot. It's chucking down with rain outside, which is not the best start. It feels like we've brought the weather with us. But let's get cracking. Oh, the vehicle's stuck. This is why we needed 4x4, because we're already stuck on the drive now. As you can see, it's proper sloppy. It's only going to get worse this track as well. Yeah. So, uh, ah, it's soaking out there. Absolutely, Absolutely draft. Look at that rain out there. But the land's really wet and boggy right now. Our driveway is really wet and slippy and boggy so I'm glad we've got the 4x4 to get in and out of the of the land because the van's really trapped here because it, it can't go anywhere with the tr where the track is at the moment. 
the heat are not working in the van, nothing can dry out, so all, all our clothes smell very damp at the moment. It's very, we're roughing it, but uh, I'll show you what my shoes look like. So to stop all my socks getting really damp, I've put food bags inside my shoes. So I'm rustling as I walk now, but at least my feet will be dry today and I'll not have wet socks because there's nothing worse than wet socks. So we're just walking down a land to meet our friends who are coming to stay with us for a little while. Yeah, we're going down to the bottom of the land because I want to see if they can get the van stuck in the mud because the mud off the rain is really bad. After failing to move the van, the men sent the women out to go get help. What's funny about this is that Dan said, I bet they come around the corner on the back of a tractor and sure enough, the cavalry arrived. With the tractor, we knew we stood a better chance of pulling the van out. With the van now pulled out, we needed to repair the road. Just so narrow, isn't it? A compacted bit. Well, that wasn't how I imagined our day going. I thought our friends might have got stuck on the driveway. I just didn't think they would get stuck right at the beginning of it, but hey ho, at least I got to meet the neighbor, the nice Portuguese farmer. And uh, it was an experience. You don't always remember the days where everything goes right. We well, haven't, uh, managed to do all the things we wanted to do today because this is pretty much took up the whole day but that's just how it goes and it's not every day you get a ride on the back of a tractor so good call cool memory making there and with more weather to come there was always more time for chaos it was now time for our van to get stuck and then the truck the bottom terrace is so boggy that we literally can't get anything up and we're stupid enough to try bring this up and we're paying the price now because the truck's stuck. It's completely stuck. So yeah. Tried a few times to get it out. After several attempts, the truck was going nowhere. The land's just so boggy. Mm -hmm. It's only this part of the land that's really affected. I know. That's why I thought it'd be all right. I thought because it's starting to dry up a little bit, so I thought, oh, we'll need to get it up here to get the building stuff up. And it's just crap. God help us trying to get the van out of here in a month. No chance, is there? You just got to laugh about it at this point, aren't you? Looks like the farmer's gonna have to come to save us. Yeah, he's gonna be like, what have you idiots been doing? Again. <laughs> The next morning, fortunately, the farmer didn't have to save our bacon again, which saved our embarrassment. Our friends came to the rescue and we found that olive tree branches make great traction. Mm -hmm. 
We knew at this point we had to take things into our own hands and come up with solutions to improve the water situation. Now I've got me, me proper Viking tool now. Ding, ding, ding. And my Viking beard. It's time to dig some trenches. We've spotted a few blocked waterways which is causing this bottom terrace of the land to be completely flooded. Once I take this big rock out, if I can pick it up, hopefully the the the, the, the walls burst. <laughs> In the past six months, there's and always there something goes. that's been going on on the land. How are you getting on? It's going well. It's heavy. It's heavy work. I've done about four truckloads now, so it's taken a quite a long time. Some of the rocks are massive as well, so it takes quite a while to usher them up. Getting ready to build a castle here. I think we're building a house for the amount of uh, stone we've been <laughs> delivered. I said to the guy, um, "I need enough to do a patio. He's given us enough to build a castle." <laughs> <laughs> well, we are. Plan on building some castles in the future, aren't we, Laura? So yeah, we'll, uh, we need to improve our building skills before we start building castles. <laughs> we can't even build a log cabin in mind a castle. Can we? <laughs> but anyway, that's uh, the future manifestations: building castles. Before we could start the castle building, we first needed to put some basic infrastructure in place. So we've got a polytunnel here. That's the first task we're going to do: is get a polytunnel up so we can unload the van and all the things that and tools and stuff that we've got in the van and the build materials. To put and put inside this polytunnel so it's free from weather. With the polytunnel complete, it was time to put in place the next important infrastructure a metal tool shed. We utilised what wood we found to make a platform. I'm a rolling stone. Bound to roam Come the morning Or I'll be gone Pouring rain Wanna hear that train There she comes Get on. The shed's finally completed. We've still got a few more screws and stuff that we need to put in it, but yes, the mainframe is up. Some of the metal is quite bent and warped because um, we didn't have any instructions and we kind of just had to improvise and drill pilot holes for a lot of it. We carried these sheets of metal in the van with us as we travelled through Europe, so they're a little bit. Some of them are a little bit bent, but she's sturdy. She's not going anywhere. She's going to keep our tools safe and. Yeah, great success! With the shed and polytunnel in place, it was time to start tackling the barn. I don't know what it means, nothing's what it seems, but I feel gravity is all... So before we left Portugal four months ago, we decided to kind of unload the van, all the heavy stuff that we didn't need to take back to England, and so we put it in the barn. So we've got some fence panels there, and we've got like some... Well, I think some clothes and some body boards and stuff that we didn't really need to take back to England. And we've covered it over with a tarp, so it's going to be interesting to see if any mice have nibbled through them or anything. Um, 
Yeah. Let's see. There's a nest. Yeah, so it looks like they've made a nest on the body boards. They've nibbled the body board. Bring the body board over. Okay, they've had a good nibble on the body board. And there's a nest. Yeah, they've made a nest. As you can see, there's a little nest just in there. Probably some, uh, a little mice or a rat or a, sn or a snake or a lizard. <laughs> Scary. We spent many hours clearing the barn and uncovering what was there. It was so exciting uncovering all the different things that had been left. It's like proper freaky, you know what I mean? You don't know what's hiding in there. I expect a snake to come blasting out. A bag of goodies. Clearing out the barn was dusty and dirty work. There was so much compacted hay and dirt. so hot in there doing that. When I'm taking up the floor, there's just compacted dirt so, th so much down. So I can see that. I'm starting to get to the concrete floor now. So I can start to see the where it's really solid, where it's been, because a lot of these houses are built with on solid stone. So it's really good that I'm starting to get to the stone now. It's nice to get a feel of the size of the barn after sweeping up. It's made the barn look a lot bigger. So it's nice to see what we're going to be working with in the future. And what we've also done is we've swept this fireplace and it started to expose it a lot more. So we can see the actual stone work inside of it, which is really nice. So I'm looking forward to making that a feature in the barn in the future. And that's what Laura does when I've been working hard in the barn and coughing up me, coughing up me black lung. Laura's there <laughs> dancing away, dancing the heart out. <laughs> So it's now 10 to 2, we've been working all morning and it's getting really hot outside. I think it's just over 30 so what we're going to do is we're going to head down to the local river beach. The air was quite refreshing and it's nice to cool down after being in the intense heat all morning. That's like a bath in the northeast for us. <laughs> yeah, it does feel really like cold on your skin. Yeah. A lot of land clearance and strewing was needed. The land hadn't been trimmed in a very long time and it was well overdue. Well, I've been down so long. This is where the building projects really started to take shape. The first thing we talked about was making a gate from scratch. I've been down so long. That my mind can't get no rest No, no This ain't easy, darling Cause the devil's on my trail I've been running so long That my feet don't work no more
so I'm really chuffed how well the gates come out. It's, to be honest with you, it's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I really like the, I think the, the bolts really do give it such a nice flush finish. And it's really solid to be honest, it's really nice. And I'm looking forward to, um, to putting it up and getting the gate fully functioning. Basically we need to make um, some type of hinge for the gate that we made just down the bottom of the land. And I know in this barn when we first kind of cleared it out, I noticed that on the wall there was some kind of old um, brackets on the wall. Uh, steel brackets. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for my grinder, I'm going to cut them off and I'm going to pilot hole some holes for the gate. So the reason why I cut the steel off for is because it's a great way to make a gate. I've already got it in the barn, super cheap, three, <laughs> can't get any better was already here with the original um, build. So I've cut them off, I'm going to drill some pilot holes in them, take them down the bottom of the land and fix the gate that was made, made prior. we're going to be making a compost pile out of some pallet wood that we collected from the industrial area. It's going to be a big help and it's going to move us forward quite a lot with the progress on the land because now we'll be able to manage our food scraps properly and manage our waste properly and turn that into lovely compost so we can start like growing veggies and stuff and it'll be going back into the land. I'm brand new to composting, it's my first time ever making a compost pile. I'm going to be trying to hot compost. So um, it's all going to be brand new. I'm going to, it's going to be a process of trial and error. So if you're following this for some for tips, um, I wouldn't really follow. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll see how it will get on. After the completion of the calisthenics rig, there was always time for visits off the wild boar. It's another beautiful day in central Portugal. Today we're going to be building the frame for our outhouse slash toilet and shower. I'm really looking forward to this because it means that we're going to be able to have a proper place to go to the toilet. We're not going to be pooping in a bucket anymore. Well, we are going to be pooping in a bucket, but this one's going to be a fancy one. With the outdoor toilet block, we didn't fully know what we were building. We just had a rough idea and did our best to build something that will be a place for our toilet and shower on the homestead. Now that we've got the main frame up, we're just going around and putting these supporting beams just in between, just to make it more sturdy. I took these two windows for free, which I really love. They're a little bit shabby at the moment, so what we're going to do is we're going to sand them down and then once we get them in, we're going to repaint them. I 
I'm so chuffed with how these windows have come out. They've cleaned up really nicely. So the next job for me to do is I'm going to take all these little handles off and spray paint them and then we can put them back on. What we're going to do after that is we're going to attach the windows to the outhouse and then we'll eventually paint them. Laura, mm -hmm. what did you say the wood smelled like? I'm sure you said it smelled like a school breakfast. It does, it smells like like breakfast club at school. Like if you ever went to a breakfast club, it just smells like that smell that you get. So Laura thinks Douglas fir smells like breakfast and bre school breakfast in the morning. <laughs> I don't know what school she went to. <laughs> fixed in and they're looking really good. I'm so impressed with them, it's just coming together so nicely. This is now today when life shows an open door. Come on, step a chance like a pure. We then headed to the local woodyard. This was an experience within itself. We couldn't speak the language and the guys at the local wood mill couldn't quite believe that we were going to pack our camper van full of the wood. We thought the sheer amount of wood was going to snap the van in two, but we made it back safely with the wooden tow ready to clad the outhouse. However, it was a long job and took us a full day in the blistering heat to empty out all the wood. Dan said he was finding sawdust in his underpants for several days after. The sawdust got everywhere. With the wood all unloaded, it was time to get to work clad in the outhouse. With the outhouse now starting to take shape, it was time to do the compost toilet area. Days working on the outhouse were very long and the heat was intense.
With it all coming together nicely, it was time to add a touch of paint at the outside. I even added some of my own personal touches to the inside. We continued the outhouse build in the winter. We picked up some free foam boards and had the idea to use it as a makeshift insulation for the outhouse. Dan fitted the insulation all around the outhouse windows and shower. starting to take shape. Uh, I think what I, what I really like about the kind of the using the tongue and groove cladding is that it just goes up really uh, quick which makes the job a lot easier but it's starting to look really nice and I can imagine when this is all done it's going to really start to finish it off what we've already accomplished so far it's going to really finish it off nicely. Not a lot of space to move things around in here is there? Nah, it's like we're, we're like Laurel and Hardy up here. <laughs> so I'm really chuffed to actually get the chance to use this set. So this was actually a set, there's a little bit of a story behind this because um, 
when my granddad passed away, um, one of the first things I did was kind of collect collect a lot of his old tools. And my granddad used to be a woodman, and used to do a lot. He used to do a lot of woodwork and stuff, and have a lot of good woodworking skills. So I'm really chuffed to be able to carry kind of carry that legacy on in some shape or form, and be able to utilize it in kind of building things on the land. I don't think I'm going to get up to his standard, but um, I strive to anyway. <laughs> With the outhouse electrics done, we headed into the city and picked up some metal roofing to line the shower. Definitely put gloves on this time to carry the, the sheet metal up to the top of the land. Because when I was picking these up, I ended up slicing my hand. And uh, it's not good. Sheet metal's not good uh, for paper cuts. It's like one up from paper. it was time to cut the sheet metal. We're just taking a little break from work and what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and make some orange juice with the oranges that the neighbor give us. Here's Tess Laura. You're gonna go first, tell us what you think. Be good. <laughs> That's the best tasting orange juice I've ever had. To the bang? To the bang. What do you think? I'm drank it, yeah. <laughs> Give us a check on <laughs> I know you want it back. <laughs> the shower area was really starting to take shape. is pretty much done now. We've got the electrics in. I'm also really happy with it. It's like much more luxurious than anything we ever imagined having on the land so we'll really chuffed with that. Late last night we had three IBCs delivered to the bottom of our driveway. It was pitch black but we decided to move them 20 metres up the track so it wasn't blocking the road. So this morning our plan is to slowly move these three IBCs um, all the way along the driveway, which is a long, long driveway, uh, all the way to the top of the land, which is going to be a fun old trip because last night when me and Laura were, were pulling these, I'm um, having to um, do a few shuffles to get them up. This was a tough job. The IBCs were so awkward to carry and having to carry them such a long distance was a challenge to say the least. How are you finding moving them down, Laura? I think I've got no words, it's really difficult. <laughs> <laughs> This has been a very difficult job, I'm not going to lie, but we only, we'll hopefully only need to do it once, unless we need any more IBCs. Come on Laura, last one, we've got this. <laughs> Come on. Now that the IBCs are all in the correct position, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be cleaning out the IBCs because some of the IBCs have a little bit of a waft to them. Um, it's nothing to worry about, the food grade, um, so we're just taking precautions. Um, it smells like it has some kind of mustard in or something. Um, one of them smells like pizza, the other one smells like mustard. And we like pizza and we like mustard, so it doesn't bother us. So anyway, we're going to clean them out and um, we're going to use some vinegar and we've got some bio biocarbonate soda to put in 
and we're just going to give them a, a thorough wash out and wash them a few times just to make sure that they're okay to put some clean water in. Oh. I can smell that from here. It smells like my Nana's socks. I don't think it smells like that. <laughs> <laughs> we've got our bicarbonate of soda, we've got our white vinegar brush and some water, so we're ready to clean them. So as we were just pumping the water there, and um, I noticed how Laura had the correct footwear on. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs them wide footed shoes when you can just like, when you have big gaps can just poke holes in shoes and yeah. repeat, make them wide footed anyway? That's the true off-grid life in that. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't got, if the, the, what they say about off-grid life, if you haven't got holes somewhere, then you're, not, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got plenty of holes. <laughs> do is we're just trying to figure out how long the pipe we need to cut is because we need to have a pipe that goes from here into another L joint and then coming down into here so we're just kind of figuring out how how long it needs to be in the trees, So now the rainwater collection's finally completed for this outhouse build. We plan to have a few more rainwater collection spots on the land and um, as we continue to develop the land we'll put them in. But the first one's in and it's a big win for us so yeah, super happy. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a test of the water and we're going to make sure that it runs cleanly and smoothly into the IVC. Oh baby! That sounds promising, That's a sound of pleasure! <laughs> nice! <laughs> That's when a plan comes to work. Love it! Great success! It's such a good feeling to know that yeah, your plan is worked out and it's all working properly because there's not, we've had loads of jobs before where we've like, we've planned everything out strategically and we've come to test it at the end and it hasn't worked out so it's a good day when something actually works out in the end so very chuffed. Yeah, it always makes a massive difference, doesn't it? It does, it does. The amount of jobs that we've done that hasn't worked out, that you don't get to see on the camera. Yeah, yeah. But this is one of them that you get to see, because <laughs> it works out. <laughs> <laughs> one of the next jobs to do was to build a plunge pool out of pallets. The whole project cost us around £18 to build. We laid the bottom of the pallet pool with sand and then added a top to line the inside. The hardest part by far was breaking down all of the pallets.
With the final few touches of wood stain, the plunge pool was completed. It's amazing what can be built just with pallets. Also amongst doing the building jobs, we experienced our first harvests. Pears, plums, figs. We love making jams and turning them into all different kinds of concoctions. However, our favourite harvest by far was definitely the grape harvest. Today is the day I was really looking forward to. It's our first grape harvest. Ever since we knew that there was grapevines on the land, we were so excited for our first grape harvest because it's just amazing to have your own grapes. From the UK, you don't really get that. And so we've just been picking off the, the red grapes that we've found so far. And everything that we've got here is just off the one vine, just this vine here, and we've still got more to pick from it. So I think we're gonna have a lot of grapes to collect, especially just red ones. We've got far more green ones. But I think we're a little bit underprepared. We've just we've only got the van at the moment and we don't have an oven or anything, so we're kind of limited to what we can do with the grapes. So I think we've got our work cut out for us and I think we're a little bit underprepared. But we'll see what we can do. One vine down, 70 to go. <sighs> we'll get there. Look at the weight of this vine, it's it's literally tore down one of the branches from the trees and it's entangled in and it's just completely dead. So once we've harvested the grapes off these, there's some really good bunches in there. I think this tree is going to be so relieved when we when we trim this vine down and tame it a bit and save the tree from all the weight that's being pushed down on it because it's a really beautiful plum tree so would hate to see it be killed by the vine but it looks like this vine and this tree have been in a relationship for quite some time because the really old vine has got a really thick um trunk <laughs> what's it called trunk you want to call it that <laughs> it's <laughs> got a thick trunk it's like really thick and it's entangled in the in the tree so they've obviously had a long-term relationship yeah but we think it's a bit toxic so it needs to be like this vine's starting to smother the tree now, so we need to cut it down. And it's got a, just as well, trust us when we see it, this, this grapevine's got a lot of junk in the trunk. It's got a lot of junk in the trunk, this one. <laughs> it's about midday now and it's getting very hot. We've decided to call it. Even though it's a lot cooler than what it has been, it's still too hot to be working out in the midday sun. So I'll show you guys what we've got and what we've managed to do. These green grapes are probably about 10% of our whole like grapevines. So I'm just waiting down here and Dan's going to get the, the van, which is going to act like a track there today, and take these grapes up to the top of the land where we'll do something with them. Is this the Oregon homestead? See? I heard I've got to pick up some grapes from the grapevine. Get it? You heard it through the grapevine? Heard it through the grapevine. <laughs> How many have you got? Uh, just a few buckets. Quite the poster. Uh, un, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. Great. Set. Get them in the back. We'll get them to the to the city. <laughs> See. Right, thanks for that darling. Uh, I'll be taking these into the town, the closest town. What I'll do is I'll try and get as much money as I can for them and I'll bring you back half. Okay. <laughs> sounds like a deal? Yeah, deal. sounds very fair. With the grapes transported to the top of the land, the best part of the harvest awaited us. Dan's borrowing my hat for a shot on you. Yeah, so, because everyone in the comments was saying that we need to wear a hat, so we decided today, doing the grape harvest, that I was going to get me Amish on, 
So now I look like a proper Amish boy. Don't know why I've got my hands on my hips for like, but uh, now I'm a proper Amish boy, you know. All I need now is a piece of straw out my mouth. With the grapes now at the top of the land, it was now time to do what we had been most excited about, stomp on the grapes. So I've just washed my feet and now we're going to start stomping on the grapes. <laughs> and I'm really excited about doing this, I think it's going to be so cool. And apparently it's the best way to break them down without breaking the seeds, which if you break the seeds it can make the um, juice very bitter. So apparently the human foot's the perfect tool, so... I'm going to get a little foot massage today, which <laughs> should be nice, so here we go. Oh, it feels weird, that. How does it feel? It feels quite nice. I'm just hoping I don't slip and slide everywhere. I'm actually surprised at how much juice is coming out of them just by stomping on them. I know I'll probably sound a bit inexperienced but I've never really watched anyone do this before and I've never done this myself so everything that I'm experiencing is like totally brand new and, and exciting so yeah it's cool. I quite like it to be honest. I can't wait for me to have a go. <laughs> Maybe you can't with my toes. No. <laughs> it's getting there, it's getting there. Are you drinking this tonight? <laughs> Nice? It's very nice. Probably gonna get loads of comments like, that's not very hygienic. <laughs> <laughs> My turn next. We'll see. We'll see. Make sure they don't think you're hygienic. <laughs> Wait till I get in there. Mmm. 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 It's delicious, isn't it? It is nice, isn't it? We then set up a little station to separate the juice from the pulp. Close your eyes Get some rest I'm by your side Lay your head on my chest About nine litres from the red grape so far and we've drank about two litres of that raw because we couldn't wait to boil it and preserve it so we couldn't help ourselves. So what I'm doing now is I've just put that in, the juice in the pan with some honey. We're going to bring that to a boil and then we're going to preserve it properly in jars so hopefully that we'll be able to enjoy grape juice for the months to come. Don't know, we see bartenders breaking up a, a food bag full of ice. A little bit of wood. So after a long day we're up on the roof and instead of it being an orange juice tonight it's a grape juice. So it's been a very long day but it's nice to enjoy the fruits of our labour while watching the sunset. Yeah, beautiful. An outdoor kitchen was next on the agenda. So 
so our friend Dan has got an idea <laughs> to get the, to haul the wood up to the land because the, the wood's so big. He's gonna, he says he's gonna sit in the back of the truck and, and make sure the wood doesn't fall off. So, as a safety precaution, we haven't signed no disclaimers. <laughs> I'm just ready to shout stop at any moment. As soon as it starts to move, I'm gonna shout stop. Don't you wanna play? Yeah, Dan, Dan's got the hard job on the roof. We've got the easy job. Mm. Dan's just uh, taking it easy and smooth. While Dan's uh, holding the wood in place. Holding on for dear life. <laughs> holding on for dear life. But hey, don't you wanna play? Double down, throw some dice, take off now. Don't think twice, but hey. Last one, done and dusted. Hooray! <laughs> After the hard work of lumbering the wood up the land, it was time to prepare it to be put up. What we're going to do is we're going to prepare the wood for the outdoor kitchen. I'm so looking forward to doing this job because after experiencing the summer here last year and not having any, any area for shade apart from the van which is too hot in there, I'm super looking forward to getting this up and having somewhere that's actually shady in the summer. So as I'm cutting the wood, it's got a lovely smell to it. It must be, each piece of wood must be a little bit different because each has a different type of smell. This one smells like school, school breakfast in the morning, like Laura said last time. <laughs> breakfast club. <laughs> this one's breakfast club. <laughs> <laughs> this piece of wood's breakfast club. This one's dinner club. And the ones in the corner are tea club. After school club. <laughs> After school club. Besides the joke though, the wood has got a really nice smell to it. So it's a... Uh, Nice and perfumey in here. <laughs> hey. I'm tired just watching you do that. That's took a little bit longer than I thought it was going to take. Um, I tried to use my mitre saw to do it, but the mitre saw didn't have a big enough extension on it to be able to do it, so I had to revert to the trusty old saw. and. Uh, Taking some time to say the least. <laughs> Daniel? Oh, is this for me? I've got you a honey hot water and a pastel de natta. Oh, you look after me too well, don't you? For the waker. Grafting hard in here and uh, getting good air looked after. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel sorry for you because there's not much I can do apart from what. <laughs> oh. You make a good honey hot water. What are we doing today, Mrs. Laura? <laughs> today, Mr. Daniel, we're making an outdoor kitchen, so we're gonna put posts up for like a little shade area for it. So I just kind of measure it to make sure it's all square and stuff before we start doing stuff that's irreversible. Before we put it in and it's on a massive wonk. Yeah. So we're just double checking, making sure everything's all right before we like have a massive cock up. Like all the last jobs we've done. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we're being extra careful with this one. This one is a good one. Oh well. We'll be okay. We'll sort out. <laughs> we're doing the measure test. Doing the traditional method. Measure and method. Because we want to see, once we bury the post in the ground, how much room we're going to have. So, obviously we don't see this on building videos, but we just want, <laughs> want to see how much height room we'll have once we work out how much we're going to bury in the ground. How much, how much Laura's going to bury me in the ground? <laughs> yeah, <you'll, laughs> depending on how this product, project goes, I might be burying you in the ground you instead be. of the pole. It was now time to start putting up the frame for the outdoor kitchen. The timber was extremely heavy and it was a much harder job than we had expected. 
just where it was needed. Cleaning black as night, cloistered in injustice, dead. In the eye of time, nobody is losing. Faces merge and change, but your face remains the same. It was so heavy that we used the van as a makeshift ladder. So what we've done now is, is we've got the post in place and what we're thinking that we're doing, being bodge builders that we are, what we're thinking that we're going to do now is we're going to go for it what it's at because we've checked on the spirit level and it seems quite decent. So we're going to go for it because the wood's so heavy. So one win is that we got it up in the first place. So we're going to just go for where it's at now. What we're going to do now is we're going to put some bolts in place to make sure it's sturdy and then we're going to put the concrete in. second post and position, we needed to back the van up again to help us lift the beams up. Okay, keep coming. posts are now concreted in for the outdoor kitchen and we're really happy with how the frame looks. The wood's really good quality and it's very sturdy so I'm just very impressed with that we've actually done this ourselves. It's um, quite proud of it but we're going to be putting a flooring in, we're going to be putting the roof on so I'm excited to see how it looks once it all comes together. We've got some really nice ideas of how we're going to lay out the kitchen. <laughs> Are you scared Laura? I'm a proper freak out on ladders, I hate it. I'm really nervous. So while Laura is painting and protecting the main frame that is out for the outdoor kitchen, what I'm going to do is there's what I've done. We've done is is that there's many uh, pre-prepared beams in here ready to place upon the roof. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to haul these outside so that we can also give these an extra bit of protection too. You're not going to believe it, but a little bird has been mugging us right off. <laughs> it's been mugging us right off, mate. Every single time I've been letting these dry and walking away, there's a little bird been coming over and it's been having a crap right on the piece of wood. <laughs> so I've had to keep cleaning it off every single time. Outdoor living, eh? Just got three more to do and uh, and then we can put them in and it's starting to look like a it's starting to look like something now. So we've lined up all the beams now, I've got them all looking pretty much parallel which is good. Now we're just gonna go up and screw them all in. So just this last one to now go in. And then the frame is completely complete and then it's time to put the roof on. But we're getting there, it's just looking sturdy and uh, it's looking really nice. So we're looking forward to seeing how it unfolds. Sorry, clenching tight there. 
<laughs> don't show me bum because I actually am clenching. <laughs> I don't like being on the ladder. Like you it. get nervous, Laura. Yeah, I do. I really do. After having many bum clenching moments, Dan took the reins and climbed the ladder instead. The roof's finished, yay! I'm really happy with how it looks and I don't know if you can hear but it's quite windy today and it's holding up perfectly so this is going to be a really good addition to the land in the summer just having a little bit of outdoor shade it's just going to make our life so much better. With the outdoor kitchen structure now in place, things on the homestead are really starting to take shape. Late in the evening, we had a big delivery of stone delivered to the top of our driveway. So as you'd seen last night, the stone got dropped off quite late. So last night I got one run of the truck loaded and I've got it unloaded this morning quite early this morning, it's quite chilly. I'm all wrapped up this morning, but I'm sure I'll be heating up very fast and the layers will be coming off sooner than you know. Dan's holding up the stones again, but this time the real muscles come to help him. Laura's bringing the muscle and she's going to show, show up all the guys out there on YouTube. She's going to show you how to lift a true big Portuguese stone. You've done well picking that up, Laura. <laughs> this, this is the last one I've got out of the truck, out of the load we've just done there. Um, look, I mean, look at the pile, look at the size of it. <laughs> yeah, you've done a good job. So I, th I think what basically, it, like at the minute is because there's so much stone here for the, the current job that we want to do with the amount of stones we've got what we're thinking is we can build a pizza stove we can build things for the outdoor kitchen what else laura there's loads we can build <laughs> steps we can yeah. build terraces there's loads of things we can do with this you know it's going to be awesome it's going to come in handy fire pit, fire pit for the future after many days of hard graft and hauling stones, it was finally time to work out where the stones would be placed to make the patio. Done the heavy load, now you have the satisfying bit of ironing it out. Time to rake! <laughs> I want to get me feet in and just kick it about, but Dan says apparently that doesn't look good for the camera, so I've got to use the shovel. <laughs> Laura, look, we're not doing it, um, we're not doing it northeast style, you know, like kicking it about everywhere. 
posh YouTuber style. Look, we're doing things properly. <laughs> Very sad day on the land today. This wheelbarrow's gone to the, the great wheelbarrow heaven in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> the retirement yard. Yeah, the retirement yard. It's been battered and broken for a while. The wheels completely bust, the tires shred. It lies on an angle, no matter how much we tighten the bolts and things, it just seems to always want to tip over, and never be straight, so. Tony, Tony had a good life. He had a good how many months? <laughs> not very, not very many months. On he the did. Farm. He did about five months of work, if that. Yeah, but uh, you know what they say: buy cheap, buy twice, and work twice as hard. So, yeah. So we've upgraded our wheelbarrow today. So looking forward to showcasing it around the land. So in replace of Tony, who's now retired, this is our new stud muffin, Tyson. <laughs> new sexy stud muffin, Tyson. And he's gonna. We're gonna put him to work. <laughs> So we're glad to welcome Tyson into the family. Let's get him to work. took a lot of hard work anyway, we're there now, we took a lot of dirt out, now it's time to bring in the stones. <laughs> Still don't like looking posh with a rig. I just want to kick, get me feet in and just kick it all about. Sometimes the rig can level it out better though. I think yeah, I think getting the main stuff out, just kick it about and then to even it out, get the rake in. And then we'll let you get your feet in, eh? Yeah. Get your hands in if you want as well. No, I don't need hands in. <laughs> Falling leaves like the breeze 
want to blow on We now have ourselves the four hammer <laughs> designed for all different surfaces. <laughs> With the Thor hammer now constructed, it was time to put it to work. We then literally spent the next several hours shifting through the stone looking for the best pieces. We spent so long staring at the rock faces, we can now agree that we are experts. But jokes aside, I never want to see another stone again. We then had the long awaited job of hauling the stone up the land and preparing it so it's all ready to lay. starting to get there. The next job was to spread it out. While I'm taking a little break from kind of leveling the floor out, Laura's making some nice delicious breakfast and I'm starving now. So I'm gonna go and see what she's ushered up for us. Honey, 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 I'm home. Yeah. What's for food? The same thing that we'll have every morning. And what's that? It's eggs on bread. <laughs> it's really spicing it up there, but yeah, eggs on bread basically. No. Fried egg on toast. No. How do you like your eggs in the morning? How do you like them? I like them cooked. <laughs> I like mine with a kiss. Dear. <laughs> boiled up, boiled up, boiled up, fried. I'm satisfied. As long as I get my kiss. I wasn't expecting that one. <laughs> How's the pattern going, Laura? It's tedious. <laughs> <laughs> Needs to be done though, so just cracking on with it. mixed down now what we're going to do is we're going to start laying the stones and because the stones are at different thicknesses what we've got is a mallet and we've got different tools just to kind of spread the sand out so we can get them level and we've got a spirit level to test so we'll see how it goes hopefully it's not all crooked
slowly getting there. It's a tedious job, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And we've got to do it all tonight because otherwise this is going to set. So the pressure's on. So it's starting to get dark now and as we've just kind of finished the outside circle bit anyway the rest under the undercover it just started raining so uh, I don't know if that was a sign to stop because we've been going too long every day it's been a long day hasn't it mm, very long I think it's been one of them jobs where I think we've rushed it a bit too quick um, we've got other things that we have to do um, we've got many other things that we're doing beh behind the scenes so we're kind of like trying to get this done as quick as we can so a big job that we want to get finished so we can move on to some to other jobs but it's just part of the off-grid journey always learning and uh to, we've definitely learned for this one today haven't we mm -hmm. not rush things <laughs> yeah not rushing. But, um, i like how it looks and we've run out of stones at the perfect point because that's where the kitchen's going to go so we don't need to have it on the on the stone yeah. patio so so what we're thinking with the bit that we've run out of stones with what we're going to do is, is we're just going to leave it for now let the let it set and do its thing and eventually once we kind of and obviously the next job is to, to, to rub some more mortar into the, into the gaps to, to make it uh, strengthen it and seal it properly. But at the same time what we're going to be doing with the outdoor kitchen is that we're going to be building uh, an outdoor kitchen using either bricks or some sheet. Some breeze blocks breeze and then blocks, yeah. the outside so of it. So, there's yeah. yet to be decided on that but that's what we're going to be doing. So it's looking good so far and we'll just see how it sets. It's on the perfect spot on the line as well because this is a bit of, um, I think it's granite stone that's just left uncovered so it's perfect for burning because it doesn't scorch the land and I think when we've uncovered this before we've cleared it out we've noticed that the previous farmer burned here as well because of all the ash that was found there. But yeah, nice to have a fire on in the night time and do some land clearing at the same time. So as we're just settling down for the night we'd, as Laura said mentioned before, we decided to have a little fire to get rid of some land clearance we always love to kind of choose to do it on a night time so that we can kind of use it as a excuse to have a little fire and watch the stars and keep warm on a night time. It's, uh, there's something really special about being able to just kind of sit on your own land and appreciate the day, the hard work that's gone into the land, the mistakes, the errors and uh, learn from everything and then just kind of wake up the next morning fully refreshed again and go at it again. What I like about having the fire on the night time is like it's like we're waking and we're clearing the land but we're also enjoying the fire as well. Getting two birds with one stone.
exciting day planned. We've been planning out this job for quite some time. What we're going to do is we're going to build a water system from the well. So we're going to have three points. So it's going to come off next to the well, have a little tap there. At the mid terrace of the land, we're going to have another tap here. And then on the top of the land next to the barn, we're going to also going to have another tap. So we'll have a lot of water points on the land. So it's going to be a very basic system and we're just going to put it in. And then in the future, when we need water to the barn for our, our cooking and stuff, we're going to improve on it in the future, hopefully. But uh, yeah, looking forward to it. So while we're waiting for the top post that we've just done to, to, to set the concrete, we're going to start slowly working our way up with this tubing from this point that we've just done and we're going to start zigging zagging all over the land. <laughs> Only you can make a game out of that. <laughs> going to go crawling through? Puyaka, puyaka, all the ladies shout puyaka, puyaka. Who let the dogs out? Who, 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 who? Hello, my name is Borat. I'm from Kazakhstan. Hello, my name is Borat. Entry, please. Tune, tune, black and white on me. Red white on me. Red white on me. Two hours later. Did you have fun there? Yeah, I can't believe our sound waves travelled 100 metres through this pipe. <laughs> it was muffled, but I could definitely make out what you were saying. I know, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's class. I can't believe we just spent the last hour playing with that. I know. <laughs> I think we're big kids, really, aren't we? <laughs> we're not cut out for this adult life. <laughs> We've, we've got the pump all set up ready to rock. All we need to do is just put it in and lower it into the well. And fingers crossed, hopefully, the waterways work and there's no leakages. Well, that didn't go as planned. I think it's just because we haven't pushed the, the pipe in far enough into the, the connection. So we're going to redo that and then try again and see if it works. No job goes as planned, does it, Laura? No, it doesn't. The, thing, the, good, thing, the good thing is, though, that the sun's come out now. So we can pause, reflect, and then come back and try and solve the problem. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. After we've zened ourselves out, after because we're a little bit stressed. We've went up to every single connection and tightened it up. I think you had to you have to really force it in and we didn't do that the first time so so now we're just gonna test it and see if it leaks or not. So fingers crossed it doesn't because we're out of ideas after this. So I'm so glad the first one is okay. Now we just need to check the second point. Hopefully there's no more leaks. And then the third point. I think we've got this one, do you? Yeah, I think so. We tighten them up pretty I'm excited tight. to see. Second one, Laura. You Are ready? we gonna do it? I'm nervous. I am too as well. Let's go. Yes! Good? Wow. Yes! Look at the flow on Good that. flow as well, isn't it? Yeah, class. Third one, this is gonna be a big success. Yeah. I can't see any leaks. I can't see any leaks yet. Moment of truth. Last one, come on. 
Oh yes! Oh. I have a go. That oh, well, was quite warm as well. Well, nice. hey. No leaks. Woo woo! No See, leaks. Said, ooh, ooh. Definitely no leaks. <laughs> Can't say any leaks. Great hey. success. Well, we're at the top of the land, eh? <laughs> 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 All the ladies say Booyaka 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 All the ladies say Booyaka 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 It's too much of that we've got that sorted now um, Massive win Yeah My mind's already thinking about what like where to put little irrigation channels Where we're going to put future water points So yeah very exciting stuff yeah. and a massive win It's just To have running water on the land is going to make our summer so much better than it was yeah. last summer so So, so I got there eventually, took quite a bit of time, more time than I thought, to dig all the way from the bottom of the land all the way up to here. Some tough work, but um, we're there now, so all I need to do now is, is the final stretch is to basically just get this tubing and make sure that's buried, or buried enough underneath the ground. With the waterways done, it was time to move on to the driveway. This was a must needed job for us. The land had become so swampy that we needed to put something in place. Man, I always had stories about the city line and the crazy nights. I figure I should probably give it a try. Baby, check it out, see what it's all about. But the traffic was fast and the money was slow. The people I met you never get to know. I kind of miss this place I used to live back Cause up here it's pregnant Paycheck, rat race, what's next? I'm tired of feeling like a small fish in a big pond I think I go back where I came from Where everybody knows my name My friends are still the same I guess the slow life hit me just right Like a bonfire on a cold night Hell, and you can keep your nine to five Happy with the simple life Yeah, I ain't here to try to change your mind I'm Trying to save your time In case you're thinking about breaking out the bucket list Girl, you can skip this funny business So this is mostly level now, we've put dirt down just to even it out. What we're going to do now is we're going to get a membrane, put that down and then get the gravels from over there. The gravels? The gravel. And gravels. Then get... Gra who's gravels? <laughs> 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 well, what is it you have under here, me, you ask? Well, my friends, this is where the magic happens. This is where the real magic happens. Treasures. Gold. We have gold. <laughs> No rest. No, no. I've been down so long that my mind can't 
get no rest No, no This ain't easy, darling Cause the devil's on my trail I've been running so long That my feet don't work no more Sick of doing the gravel now, Laura. Are you? Yeah, I feel like I'm a pro at it now because I've done it so many times. First lap's all done. Now just time to go to the city and get this. How about have a race to the end? You can get the line up the quickest. So you can get the line at the top the quickest. Right. Well, what's the forfeit? The loser makes tea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to get off, get out of making the tea out, I'm up for. <laughs> Come back to the starting line. Oh, you want to race up from there? Okay. Ready? Right. One, <laughs> two. Three, go! After wearing ourselves out, Fortunately, we're starting to make some tracks, no pun intended. So in hindsight, we realised that we should have probably started with the truck at the bottom and then drove it up, but we kind of just wanted to see where the tyre tracks would be. But what we're going to do now is we've brought the truck down the track and we're just going to lift this off and just scoop the gravel out and just fill in these bits in the middle and see how far we can get. Laura's going ham. I want to get this done. That's why. <laughs> you ready for your food tea now? Yeah, I'm smiling. <laughs> You're making it, remember? I won. Yeah, I did. I failed miserably. <laughs> with the driveway now finally done after all that hard work, it was time to test it out with the truck. So we've actually, for the first time ever, we've got the truck up to the top of the land. It feels really good. And we can see Onyx, so the truck's about to meet Onyx for the first time at a camper van. Yeah, no more he no more heavy hauling, stupid wheelbarrows up the top now. We've got the real truck now. The truck to. The truck to. <laughs> <The truck -ta. laughs> So Onyx gets to meet his brother for the first time. They've been like long distance friends, but now they forget to properly introduce themselves. Yeah, now they're close up each other now, aren't they? Picked up this really heavy duty, thick, like industrial top. And while at the shops, it kind of just leaves stuff to the side for you to, for you to take or to utilize. 
And I think this was actually one of the like an advertising top because on the other side it's got a picture of a lawnmower and stuff. So it's definitely waterproof and stuff because it's meant to be meant to be outside advertising. But yeah, good to repurpose it. Halfway. Now I've got the main shape set up, we're just going to go around and peg the outside of it so it's nice and sturdy. <laughs> and what are you doing with that may I ask? What you what 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 uh wh where are you gonna stick that? I'm gonna stick it in a belt tent, mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it's going. <laughs> With the ground matting in place, it was time to bring in the coir matting. We then headed to the city where we picked up a second hand mattress. Why would it go backwards? <laughs> hey. That's quite a firm one, it's good. We then installed a log bin and stove into the bell tent. We also found a nice piece of slate on the land to use as a base for the log burner. We brought a second hand cabinet over with us to place inside the bell tent. The bell tent was now starting to feel like a home. We're super proud of everything we achieved in just six short months. We don't know what the next six months hold for us, but we're going to continue moving forward every day and bring you all along for the journey. If you've made it this far into the documentary, we know you share our desire to connect to a lifestyle which is harder, yet much more fulfilling. We hope that whatever you want to achieve in your life, you can find a way to it too. <laughs>